Yo Futurists, this is one of those topics, housing affordability, that I'm really passionate about. Partly because I think very few people are talking about it, and partly because it's actually in the government's best interest to not make it affordable. I've talked before about how of all the basic human needs, you know, like food, water, shelter, electricity, clothing, uh, and public communications, of all of those, housing is basically the only one that's expensive. Sure, there's like some minor trends, you know, electricity is being privatized, so that's kind of like driving the price up a bit, um, and food, particularly in Australia, there's a duopoly between like Woolworths and Coles, so it might have a bit of an effect. But if you look at the overarching trend, you know, things like food, water, electricity, um, they've all been dropping in price rapidly over the last decade. They're moving towards that post-scarcity world where things basically uh, cost, you know, almost zero. But housing and shelter, because it's an investment vehicle now, because there are these government rules like negative gearing and these tax incentives, it's going the other way. Everything's costing way more. I'd say for the overwhelming majority of the population, uh, you know, whether they've got a mortgage or rent, they are their biggest cost. They can be up to or more than half of their income per week, yeah? But it makes absolutely no sense. Like, why do you pay rent? Why does it cost you so much fucking money to pay for rent when, like, where's that money going? What's it doing? Like, if you just build a shack out in the bush, it'd cost you nothing. I mean, not too long ago, you basically just buy a block of land that would cost you, you know, a few thousand dollars, and then you just build a house on it, same thing, that cost you a few thousand dollars, and that's it. You no longer pay anything else. You just pay a land tax. The value of property should actually go down over time, so really the only increasing, the only uh, asset there is the land, the location, the demand for that location. The property should be a liability. And when you buy a car or any type of like, uh, some type of machinery or asset or something, it has a natural depreciation rate attached to it, and that should be reflected in the value of house prices, but it's not. In a completely free market, really the value of property should just be the demand and the, the value placed on that land, that location, plus the house and the type of house, minus its depreciation and age. Instead, we're in this situation where the government's introduced all these rules like in Australia, negative gearing and all these other things that encourage people who are basically like on the low income or middle class to buy houses, which then drives up demand. And it's not just the government, our entire society, our entire societal culture is built around this concept that buying uh, property, owning property is good, and owning more than one is good. Owning investment properties, that's a good thing to do. That would be great if it actually increased housing accessibility and affordability and actually, you know, helped uh, increase supply to meet demand, but it doesn't do any of that. It's just a fucking investment vehicle. You can look up countless articles, um, uh, past census data, and I'm kind of keen to look for the recent census data that shows that there are actually empty properties everywhere because that's actually way more beneficial to investors. And so what's happened is all these rules and all this kind of like ease of uh, getting loans to buy houses, all these negative gearing rules and stuff like that is massively driving up the, the price, the value of these houses at a rapid rate. Now, from the government's perspective, this is why they never want housing affordability, because from their perspective, increasing house prices actually shows an increasing economy. It shows a growing economy, a larger GDP. A growing economy apparently means more GDP, apparently means more wealth, apparently means more jobs. It does, but you can look at it in a different way here as well. Because obviously as house prices rise, the interest repayments on the, those loans you need to buy those houses becomes larger, which means you need to charge more rent to cover the interest on those loans. Like when you pay almost half your income in rent, that money's not going directly to the landlord per se. Most of the time it's going to pay off the interest on the loan that the landlord got to buy the property in the first place so they can have capital gains. The landlords typically lose money, they don't make money, any money off the rent, they, they're basically making their money on the increase in value of the property over time, so that after 10, 20 years they sell it and they make, you know, a couple hundred grand. And so here's a little bit of a conspiracy theory, so the government introduces the rules like negative, negative gearing and all these other things, which encourages people to buy houses, which causes the, the value of those house prices to increase. That then increases the economy and increases the wealth and increases the GDP, so it makes the government look good, um, and then as a side effect it increases jobs. But perhaps the reason it increases jobs is this. When you have to pay two, three, four, five hundred dollars just for a room in a city for rent, you need to go get a job to pay for that. So everyone has to do this. Why do people need to work 40, hours, 40, 60, 70, 80 hours a week and earn 60, 70, 80, 100 grand a year plus to have their own lifestyle? It's because they're paying so much in fucking rent. In an ideal world, rent would actually decrease down to zero. So when you move into a brand new property, obviously there's been an upfront cost there. So the rent should be at a standard high level to pay that off as quick as possible. Then as the cost of building that property is basically uh, paid off, it should decrease down to essentially just a maintenance fee. Imagine like 5, 10, 20 bucks a month. That's literally what rent should be. And if we remove the centralization and the kind of uh, investment vehicle and the speculators and all, this, all these government rules that encourage all this crap to begin with in the first place, we could actually achieve that. I've talked before about how with self-driving cars, they could actually own themselves. So cars that are self-driving, that are electric, they could actually run entirely on a blockchain, not be owned by anyone and maintain themselves. So how could this work? Well, basically I could just buy a self-driving car with a loan, say 50 grand loan. Um, I then create a DAO uh, on the blockchain, a smart contract which owns that car. The car then automatically drives people around, basically acts as like a taxi service, uh, an on-demand car service, much like Uber. So it makes its own money and it collects its own money directly with no middleman. 
after doing this for a few months and making its own money, you could basically pay off that loan. Um, then what I could do, I could actually do, um, remember in Aladdin where kind of Aladdin sets the genie free? I could do that with the car. So that DAO, that contract, that smart contract I created on the blockchain, what I could actually do is, is do a code update that actually and makes it so that I can never change it again. So it just always operates by itself. The software car would quite literally then own itself and operate itself. So it could just keep working, it could keep money, making money, it could keep pulling it, um, and then it could just have regular maintenance checks where it pays someone a bit of that money. And before you give it full autonomy and full freedom, you could just uh, program into it this idea that, well, any, any money that you have that's, you know, once you, once you get to a certain size, start buying more cars so you own a fleet. You could end up quite literally with a fleet of tens of thousands of cars that all own themselves, and they've just started from that one seed. So, let's do this with fucking houses. Again, same deal, you could like, uh, why, do, why do houses have to be owned by one individual when really they're just like collecting rent? Like, why can't a house own itself and you pay rent directly to that house? Any excess cash it receives, it could just go buy more property. And so you could end up with this like massive kind of portfolio of properties that are all owned by themselves and rent gradually decreases to zero over time. Particularly if you coded into its agency this idea of uh, housing affordability, then it could actually work out a way to use its, it use its funds to maximize the number of cheap affordable housing. Perhaps paired to this concept of houses owning themselves via DAOs and blockchains, you could actually pair it with a machine learning algorithm, an AI, which intends to buy houses low and flip them high which would maximize the speed at which you can buy more houses. And the whole point is like buy as many houses, not so much for the value, but more so for the number of occupants they can house cheaply. I think jobs and housing and rent and things like these, they're kind of like a form of slavery that's kind of institutionalized, it's indoctrinated. It's something that we don't even question because we don't think of it as slavery. But can you think of how freeing it would be to you personally and to the entirety of humanity if rent and housing was really no different to like a Netflix or a Spotify subscription? 10 bucks a week at